What's going on, Feel Good Fathers? Uh, great guest here for you today, Odini, my man. He's got, um, it was such a great conversation we had off air just before we got on here. Mm -hmm. We're actually recording late because we just really got into it. And uh, I actually had to stop and just say, hold on, Odini. Yeah. We got to stop. We got to record because mm -hmm. otherwise we're going to talk for another hour. So I'm really excited to uh, have this conversation and share it with you, Feel Good Father. Um, Odini, how about you go ahead and give us an intro and let us know a little bit about who you are and uh, what we're going to talk about. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I really appreciate being on the show. Uh, it, it's it feels good to connect with others, like mine especially. So um, I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so as stated before, you know, I'm Odini. Um, I basically am into the, uh, I would I like to say the word business, but it's kind of cliche, but I'm into the world of serving others and specifically serving dads who are co-parenting. Um, so I basically have two children, uh, two different mothers. So I have always navigated co-parenting for like the last 12 years. I have a 12 year old son and a two year old daughter. Uh, so for me, I had realized that fatherhood was always like the most exciting and joyful moments of my life. But then self-awareness made me realize that it was also the most like isolated times in my life you know what i mean and it was also the most times of feeling underappreciated undervalued so um and i'm like i feel like mo uh, so many people are going through this right mm -hmm. so it was like how do i like reach out and help others that are going through this because it's tough to navigate the co-parenting world fatherhood world while trying to achieve your own aspirations you know like um it's tough you kind of get this identity crisis where you're like am i a bad dad because i really want to like start this business and you know what i mean or am i a bad dad because like i just can't communicate properly with this person you know what i mean and it's like uh so my whole thing is reframe how you're thinking about it all you know mm -hmm. and that will help you in your co-parenting relationships with your bond with your children and it also just naturally help you with achieving your own goals. So that's what I that's what I'm that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to serve. Um, I have a journal that I'm going to be releasing soon. The journal all dads can use a journal. Um, it's not specifically the co-parenting. The coaching will be, but the journal is really for all dads to just self reflect and really tap into self awareness that will allow you to kind of like just express yourself more. I, I love what you're saying earlier on where you're saying, Hey, I, I entered the dad world. Mm -hmm. I had these amazing emotional experiences. And I, I think it was, uh, whether we like him or not, right. Ben Shapiro said, mm -hmm. and he described the experience and I absolutely loved it. He said, all right. So your emotional range as a solo guy is like, say it's like 50 to minus 50. If you yeah. got, that's kind of like where you're hanging out. Yeah. You get somebody that you love and you're hanging out with them. Like it might go to 100 minus 100. Like you're kind of increasing your range a little bit. And he said, what, what most men don't understand is that you have kids and then it's infinite up, infinite down. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that, that's a great way to look at it. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, and, and also like when it comes to being up and down as dads, it's like, you're battling internal, right? Like I'm supposed to be, you know, the disciplinarian, but I'm also supposed to be the cool person. I'm supposed to be the breadwinner, but then like society is also going to pour expectations on you. So it's just, it's tough and it's tough to be a parent in general, right? You know, we all have a hard task in front of us, but I think for dads, it's like, it's just hard because we don't really like get that kind of ready on the spot support. You know what I mean? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I'd love to hear, you know, what are the, what are the surprising moments? Let, let's go through a couple of moments here, yeah. like early on where you really realize, oh, you know, if, if somebody had just explained these five things to me, mm -hmm. yeah, like here, here are these five things. Cause here's what, here's what I thought. Okay. I thought being a new dad was like changing diapers and like, and like playing with my kid and like, and eventually like teaching them colors and, and working them through stuff. And, uh, that's not <laughs> what being a dad no, is about. No. It's a good start, but it definitely, yeah. you know, it, it, it definitely was like, those were good skills to have, mm -hmm. but I'd love to hear your take on what were the things that really 
And really specifically, I'd love to hear, I think, and feel good fathers would be interested. What were the highs you're talking about that were like amazing? Mm -hmm. And then what were the things where you felt, man, this, this thing really made me feel isolated right here. Yeah, no. So that's, that's actually a great question. Um, I would say if we talk about the highs, right, obviously the change in, first of all, it's funny you say that it's like people laugh all the time. I love changing diapers. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's right. actually my thing. Like the number twos, I'm a little, yeah, I'm like, ah, oh. the number twos, but I, I, this changing diapers is, is actually my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. actually like a bonding moment between me and my mm -hmm. kids. I always feel like, um, but I would say some of the highs are just those moments when your kid emotionally, especially as they grow, like my son is 12 and even my daughter, she's two, she's done some emotional, great things emotionally. When they emotionally do things that you're kind of caught off guard, like, you know, like, you're like, wow. Like, you know, one time I was like pressed for like time or finances and I was trying to like, figure out, can I go to the basketball court with my son today? Or do I have to stay and finish this thing? And I'm trying to figure it out because I know he wants to play basketball. And I looked at him and I like, and he was like six. And I like, I'm telling him my plight. And he's like, dad, it's fine. This is important. We can do basketball tomorrow or like snapshot that moment. And it's like, wow. Right, yeah. because a six year old you're thinking they're like pissed, you know, like I I would much rather go play basketball than to yeah. sit in the house and have you on the laptop doing this thing. But in that moment where he's like, Dad, it's fine, I understand that this is important. We can do this tomorrow. So moments like that, man, when your kids show like emotional intelligence, you just feel like I thought I was raising a robot, but I'm not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, you know, and my daughter, she's only two, but like, you know, she has a way of like truly showing her affection for you, which is like, yeah. you know, when you're, they're younger, you're like, give me a kiss. And it's great. They kiss you back. But when, when she's like, now she's like hugging me and kissing me without demand, you know, without instruction, stuff like that. You know, when they just show that emotion freely, it's, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. How about the isolated side? Man. So this I tell the story all the time, but <laughs> my son had a, um, he had a procedure where he had to get his appendix removed. Um, mm. And this was a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. And his mom and I are in the hospital with him for a couple of days. And every single doctor over the course of like 48 hours, every single doctor or nurse who came into the room that we were in to give us updates, whether it be pre-surgery or post-surgery, not one person looked at me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, um, like I'm in the room. I'm I mean, I'm six foot three. I know you see me, right? And like uh, we're here for him. So it's not like i I'm here, right? So clearly I I'm interested in knowing the, the information. And uh, they just look right by you. You're not even a thing. You're not even, you know, you're invisible. Um, that that really, like, you know, that that's a real isolated time for me. And even little things like parent-teacher conferences, it's kind of like the same thing. You know, you're, you're lucky when you get that teacher who's purposely making eye contact with both of you. But most of the time, it's like the mom is the only one who gets the info because it's like our dad's just here tagging along when it's like i'm actually here because i'm very interested in my yeah. son's education how my daughter's developing like you know yeah i can i told that's the it, it's funny i had the two and, and you had two experiences right for mm -hmm. for birthing so my first experience was okay my second experience was great mm -hmm. so my first experience was I remember um, it was like at uh, Women and Infants up in Rhode Island, and that was that was an okay experience, right? Mm -hmm. It was, and I was young, like it was, you know, like my my oldest is actually turning twelve, so I think our kids are oh. roughly the same age, wow. which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, so it was like my daughter and my I have two girls, so my my oldest was born, and it was definitely, you know, it, it, and it was it was it was funny. 
the, I think the only thing that somebody said to me in woman and infants was don't run away with the kid. The security guards will tackle you at the door. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like what? And then, uh, but I, uh, my wife is actually in women's health. So she sees this stuff all the time. And then, but for the second one, it was far more, I remember like the, the abrupt statement to me was if you can't handle the birthing, what happens to her body and stuff like that, we're not going to catch you if you faint. And I was yeah. like, I was like, I get it. I was like, I got you. I know, I, I know what to expect. And then, um, but otherwise it was much more of a, Hey dad, how do you want to help? So there's a little bit more of that enrolling conversation, yeah. but the, but the healthcare thing, I completely get you. And there's, there's definitely, um, that's, that's definitely one area. Um, I, yeah, and I, and I definitely dislike the, 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 I'll share with you a little bit of mine. So those were the birthing sides, but the, the time I think where I felt the most alone was, mm -hmm. um, mom was working nights when my daughter was between three and five and mm -hmm. I would take her to the park after picking her up from daycare. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably the worst time. I remember once watching, it was a mom like walked right by me to sit like didn't like, wouldn't even make eye contact. Like I had seen this person at the yeah. park a couple of times, the whole deal. And just like, it was like the moms and the grandmas, the whole, the whole group of them made it absolutely abundantly clear that they wanted to have nothing to do with, do with me. Like I had one, one set, I sat on the park bench next to them just to kind of, cause I knew I was like, all right, I got to make my presence known. Yeah. Not intrude. I'm not, a, I'm not approaching to get attention. I'm just, I'm present in the same proximate um, space. Right. And if they, if they accept, like, it's like, if they accept the bird won't fly away. Right. Yeah. And then one time I sat down on a bench next and then the two moms that were there, they literally stood up and then walked to the other side of the park <laughs> to get away from me. And I was like, okay. Was, was this Halloween? Did you have a mask on or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, no, I, that's what I'm saying, man. Um, yeah, that, so that's like a daily occurrence, right? And mm. I think the thing about it is you're, you're thought to be like macho, right? Like, oh, uh, like, man, so what? Somebody ain't look at you in the hospital. Like, you know, it's almost like, what, what's the big deal? But it's like, nah, you really want to feel like seen, you know? And yeah. uh, it's like, I don't think a lot of people I know personally would openly just say that like you know what no that really hurt my feelings like because i actually take this serious you know like yeah. i don't just like call myself a dad because i got a kid like you know i understand it's a role i play in a much bigger aspect but i'm serious about this role like you know what i mean like I, yeah like i'm i'm, I'm here because i want to be present so to just like overlook me is 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 it's hurtful you know yeah. and uh, so it's like i'm just trying to help people you know, be able to navigate that part and be comfortable I, saying it, that this is hurtful, you know, cause I don't think I was so comfortable saying it until I was reflecting, you know what right. I mean? And then, so now I'm like, yeah, that, that hurt. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, I think definitely for the situation, you know, when we're talking about your co-parenting, right. Mm -hmm. And, and sort of like the, the world that you're, you're living in, I, there's some really great stuff that we're going to get to yeah. uh, a little bit later. Uh, but I, I imagine even in that situation, I, you know, like there are definitely feel good fathers that are in a co-parenting situation. Yeah. yeah. I imagine it's probably exacerbated, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, you know, my daughter comes in the room, like gratefully, my wife and I are together. We've been together the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's like, they can clearly see that baby looks like mom and dad, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So like, there's a, there's a, that thing. And I, and I don't know, that was a weird example. Um, I gotta, I, I don't know. I gotta imagine. I'm, I'm curious about the dynamics here. I think I, yeah. I flubbed up my example there in that little description because that's yeah, yeah. true regardless. My apologies for that. Uh, if you're a good fathers, that was a terrible example, but <laughs> in a co-parenting world, I gotta imagine that they're probably aware that you're not, that the unit's not together. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because, obviously this will all evolve based on um when you say there you're talking about the children right or you uh, yeah mean i'm talking like, about like doctor's visits school visits oh you know, like yeah everybody's well, aware so right every so you know what um 
ironically, sometimes it's assumed that you are together, <laughs> mm. which is also another thing about society, mm. right? It's like you're, you're like, you know, so if you are present in your co-parenting and you're at the basketball game because that's what you do as parents, uh, right. you're like, some people automatically marry you. <laughs> right. So you yeah. have that situation, but school and things like that, they know, you know, which is even worse, right? Because the, yeah. the, the teachers know, and we kind of tell them that up front. So they kind of have the understanding that some kids may react to what's going on at home differently. And this may be something to look out for. Um, so I feel like school, they know. Um, hospitals, healthcare, they might not, but it's still a situation where it's like, are you now treating me differently because you know I'm not married? Like, you know, you know? Yeah. I was um, going to say that must be exhausting. It's, it's probably exhausting to have to explain that. Like, yeah. no, we're not married. Yeah. No, we're not living together. Yes. You're going to have to make two calls. Yes. Yeah. You're send two emails. Like, and I'm like, I'm the guy who's like, it's weird because like I'm into it. So, you know, when earlier, actually, real life example of this happening, uh, my daughter's mom texts me uh, and said, oh, my daughter, her name is Kenley. She goes, oh, Kenley has um, pink eye. Um, you know, we have to, I got to go pick her up. Um, and this is what we're doing, X, Y, Z. And part of me, I'm like, dang, like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, it's like, you know, you can call both parents or, you know what I'm saying? Or especially they, you know, so sometimes I'm in my mind, I'm like, you know, or something happened with my son in school and like his mom is like, this is what's happening. And I'm like, I'm on the email chain. Like, I'm, why, why did I not get looped in on this Zoom call about this? Yeah. proceeding or whatever is happening you know what i mean and so it's just like you know i get it though it's like this is the person who they assume is and some rightfully so handles majority of like you know like that's my whole thing with this too it's like we want to like as co-parenting dads like we take nothing away from what moms do like you know what 100%. i mean like that that yeah. like like um it is greatly appreciated and i try to relay that as much as i can as a co-parenting dad to my kids' parents and moms, right? But like, we just want to feel like we're in a loop. <laughs> you know, we just want to feel like, hey, tag me in. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. Like, you know, if she can't make it. Like, if I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm able. I'm willing. Like, you know, I've gone to parent teacher conferences alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just think sometimes our value just doesn't seem to be uh, elevated. Whether you're married or not is what I'm realizing as I talk to other people on this journey. Like, you know, you could be living with someone and feel like you're isolated as a father, um, you know? So, yeah. I love the, uh, you, you've said a couple of times intentionality. I mm -hmm. love the really pursuing, like knowing what you want, getting in there and, and, and making it happen, right? Yeah. That is a, that's a big part of you know, really positive masculine energy. It's a really big part of showing up as a dad and just, you know, I, I you know, the, the term is like, I won't be ignored mm -hmm. in my child's life. I will not be ignored by the people. And I, and I think in that world, like it, it's that sentence is received negatively, but I, but I think in the spirit of what you're saying is just like, yo, <laughs> like, Hey, you, this is, this is where this should, this is what should be happening. And yeah. I'm an individual the statistic that's been running in my head since the 1980s is that like Gallup ran a survey mm -hmm. of, uh, I think it was like a thousand folks, something like that. So these are all like, they're great surveys, but they're, they're limited sample sets. And at that time, only about 20% of men identified strongly or positively with the role of father mm -hmm. today in 21. So based, you know, about 30 years later, it's now above 50% yeah. that, identify positively with that role. And so I think the times are changing. Yeah. And I think more men do legitimately want to be involved as a yeah. positive force in their children's lives, whether it's 
whether they're in a traditional, um, what do they call it? Nuclear, whether in a nuclear yeah. family, yeah, right. Yeah. Or whatever the family looks like. Yeah. And, and so I think, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's good. And I think it's good to call it out. I think it's good to say, Hey, like, I, I really honor you for that. Just saying, um, and it's a good example for, you know, for this. And it's a good example for feel good fathers just to say, this is what I want. This is how I want to be involved. Let's go. Yeah. Let's I mean, something. think about it this way, right? Over the last, so I recently had, and we could, this is a deeper conversation we're going to have, you know, and, and shortly, but I recently had lunch with my son's mom, right? And um, something that as co-parenting dads, like initially that's tough, right? Like, you know, I, you know, we've been apart for like 11 years and all of these things, adversity, like you sometimes you think you can't even do that. You know what I mean? So I was fortunate enough to get to a place where I'm like, hey, like, I, like, I don't really want to text about these things. Like, let's meet up for lunch and let's discuss these things, right? And in that conversation, I told her how I was, like, appreciative of the job she's doing with our son, right? And mm -hmm. she was so, you could just see the, she was so happy about that. Like, she really appreciated that gesture, right? Same thing with my daughter's mom, right? I've told her, like, what I appreciate, you know what I mean? I appreciate mm -hmm. you doing a good job. She's so happy about that. So mm -hmm. imagine if someone told us that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm not here for like a trophy. Like, yeah, this is what I'm here. Clearly I'm, I need to, I'm taking care of my responsibilities, but like when it's not just obligatory, like when it's like you're intentionally doing this stuff and, and it's not easy, it feels good for somebody to be like, man, I see you. Like, that was great. You know what I mean? And so I just look at it that way. Like, you know, they were so excited or they felt so much gratitude by me conveying that to them. Like, imagine if it was on the flip side, you know what I mean? I think, I think, you know, I think one of the big starts is going to be acceptance of other fathers. Mm -hmm. I think like when I think about this particular problem and I think about, you know, feel good father I think about, 365, you know, like mm -hmm. the 365 dad, like your community and that all everything being started. I, I think it's literally going to be our brothers acknowledging us and just being like, man, you're doing a great job. Like, just keep going. Yeah. Like, just like, man, I just, I love like, like, like for me to you is like, man, I, I love, like you set an example for this intentionality thing. And I was like, yeah, man, that assertiveness and just saying like, Hey, I'm here. I want to be involved. Mm -hmm. I want you to include me in these conversations yeah you know and even and it, and it sounds like you even you're saying with your um uh with the two mothers you're just saying like hey like i i will step up just let me know how i can support mm -hmm. you know in these situations like it just that's awesome yeah you know? i think that's a great point too about the community because that's actually one of like the four pillars of like the three six five that you know it's like self-reflection mindfulness mm -hmm. yeah. um really being intentional about your relationships, you know, with your parent, your kid's parents, and also just your children, you know, building that bond. But also the last pillar is like community, you know? And it's like, that's something that like, you know, I have two of my closest friends are fathers, right? But they're not like co-parenting dads, you know what I mean? So it's like on one end, they can support me with um, typical things that we may go through, we may align with, but then, you know, they, they can't necessarily help me with managing my emotions of a custody battle, right? Like they, they've never been in that position before, you know, they yeah. can't necessarily help me with me feeling my life is in chaos because I'm driving here, 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 five, four hours in one day, just to like secure time with my children. Right? Like, so, the community aspect is great because there's like a little community for everything. Like there's a dad in general community. There's a married dad community. There's a yeah. single dad, there's a co-parented dad community. And it's like, but it's important to find that, you know what I mean? Like it's really yeah. important to find that. And sometimes going through this journey, I felt alone. I felt like I didn't have that, even though two of my closest friends are dads, but it's like, I'm not sure I was, mature enough to or you know vulnerable enough to even come that's another thing you know i gotta be vulnerable enough to be like man this is bothering me bro you know what i mean so like seeking seeking community and all of this is is, is, is a key 
is a key thing. Uh, a really a, a good friend of mine who's run a couple masterminds, he told me once, he said, sell the mastermind on the business growth, like the entrepreneurial growth. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, they'll open up with, I haven't talked to my son in three months, or mm. it's been a couple of years since I've done this thing, or like mm. I'm having trouble with my spouse doing that, or my co-parenting thing is crushing me. And they're saying, you know, I think, I think that the, when I think of like, what do men want? Right. I think it's like a, one of the big things is not being a burden. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that for like that, the trepidation you felt about, could I be vulnerable to these guys? is like, I, I think like in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, am I going to be a burden? Like, am I yeah. adding, adding a burden? Right. And I think of like the story of your son is like, your son was probably saying like, oh, am I a burden to my dad? Mm -hmm. You know, but I think on the other side too, like what I, what I really like is that your son knew enough about your mission and what you were doing to know that like, oh like he understood. And I, I think that's a, um, that's a really great thing. You know, I've always tried to explain things in context to my oldest that this is in service to something else, or this, yeah. is, this is why I'm doing that thing. You know, mm -hmm. I used to make video games and it, and I used to tell her, I was like, look, I'm making, I'm entertaining people. Like that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving them a rest. I'm giving them a break from life. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're going to go play a Marvel game. It's like, Hey, I'm, I'm giving them a moment to just enjoy, enjoy yeah. life. Yeah. And, um, and I think that context is important. Yeah. True. Yeah. I think also what's important is like, you said something that was awesome. You said like the burden situation and I can't stress that enough. That's so true. And, you know, and these are all things that like we're going through daily that it's like, if you just take some time to like reflect, you'll be better able to, you know, to handle stuff like this. Um, but you know how many times like I was like down in the dumps, right? Like when I was going through my custody battle and um, like, I'm like, I really want to call my homeboy, tell him what's going on. But I just told him like three things two days ago. And like, I was like, you don't want to be the guy who's like, when the phone rings, they think, God. you know it's like you don't it's like you don't want to be the guy that's like odini's calling me let me take a deep breath because i know he's about to like event you know what i mean it's like you don't want to, you don't want to be you don't want to be that guy but at the same time you know you have to express yourself some way you know what i mean um you gotta I've talk loved, you gotta talk to people i love that and i love the example because i think it's really you know, self-reflection being one of your pillars, I think it's, it's really critical to, to kind of digest it. Yeah. Another, a previous guest was Aaron Tarr, T-A-R-R, -R -R, and she talked about boundaries and having different kinds of friends, right? Mm -hmm. and so she, she helps uh, young women navigate some things. And as a, as a girl dad, I was like, oh yeah, let's talk about this. Yeah. And uh, she was talking about how there's like jelly bean, oh, I'm going to mess it up. Jelly bean, Rice crispy treat and then chocolate cake mm -hmm. as like it's a, it's a social sweet sweet shop was her 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 idea her framework, and the idea was that there's a handful of double chocolate cake friends, and mm -hmm. those are the chocolate that you're talking about like they're the ones that no matter what like mm -hmm. you call, and it's like and they'll pick up whether it's good or bad you know like I have you know I don't think it's normal for us to have more than a couple I've got about two I'm about to two say yeah I probably got like two three maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> like two, yeah three. it's like I call and it's like all right I know this is, I know I know if I need to talk this is somebody I can talk to yeah and then um but I think a lot of us you know we have rice krispie treats friends and these are friends where it's like you know maybe I, I don't know if you play pickup or like you play basketball a lot like it sounds like you're on every, the court so every Sunday <laughs> These are people that you see, you, you might not talk about, you know, yeah. my mom's in the hospital or, or like, this is the bad thing I have in my life, but you're going to mm. chum it up. You're going to go just have a, have a good time. Enjoy the company. You know, you'll, you won't go deep. You'll keep things non-burdeny. Right. Yeah. And then you have, uh, um, the jelly bean friend and they're just, they're, they're really acquaintances. They're yeah. just people like. They're going to, um, we all, we all know this person. So feel good father. And tell me if not, if you know this person, do you know that guy that you love 
going out to the bar with, or you love say. going out to the park with, <laughs> or you love going out for a night or to a restaurant. They're yeah. very entertaining, all that kind of stuff, but there's no relationship. Yeah, just, yeah, you yeah. know, if I'm going to go out with this person, I'm going to have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, That's, yeah. We've all got, we all got one or two of those and they need double chocolate cakes. They need double chocolate mm-hmm. cake friends too, but mm-hmm. they're not somebody that you're going to tell your life story to. Yeah. And so, and so I think that, you know, when we're digesting it and when we're thinking about it, I think it's important for us to have that, you would say self, self-reflection, self I would say have the boundary mm-hmm. of knowing, ah, this is that person that I can I can share if I'm going through a tough time. You know, I, I always, in my life, I always try and have like a pastor, mm-hmm. you know, like a, a spiritual person that mm-hmm. would help me with that, that I can know like, all right, I'm having trouble in this capacity or I'm down or something like that, I can have a conversation with that person. And then I've also got like my best friend, right? And so like, I'm always trying to balance that thing. So like, those are my two, like, all right, I need help, yeah. spiritual battle, whatever it happens to be. And then I got, I got tons of Rice Krispies and jelly beans. And jelly and beans. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've taken a, a few jelly beans out of the bag, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But you, you got to do that sometimes when it comes, when you're growing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes they just yeah. fall out of the bag on their own. <laughs> Let's, I, I love, so I love that. I, I completely hear you, right? As you grow, you gotta, you gotta, mm-hmm. um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk put it really well. It's like fire, fire some loser friends, hire some winning friends. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So we have self-reflection, mindfulness, relationships, and community building. Yeah. I, like, tell us about self-reflection. Yeah, man. So I think, you know, When I was going through the toughest of times of co-parenting adversity, uh, you know, like toughest of moments, isolated, uh, lawyer fees out the wazoo, like just feeling like, man, how am I going to do, how am I going to make this work? Um, I discovered journaling. And, you know, while I was journaling, initially it could seem like this is just me complaining on lined paper right um but what journaling does and everyone has their own experiences but what journaling did for me was yeah i was complaining but it gave me a chance to see the complaining from this angle right and then when i saw it from this angle immediately the first thing i said to myself was well what role did i play in this you know what I mean? And and I don't think I would have been able to ask myself that question without my journaling practice. Like, yeah, maybe like a friend or your therapist could say like, what role do you think you played in this, Odini? You know what I mean? But it hits a lot different when that realization comes from self. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so once I reflected and I'm like, well, what role did I play in X, Y, Z? I was able to have a ton of more like compassion, right? I was able to like change my perspective on why this person is doing that and not, or not doing this. And it really, really helped me develop a better understanding for why I'm in the position I'm in. And it gives you a great framework to how can you now come out or manage what you're going through. And, you know, and I mean, if it wasn't for self-reflection, I wouldn't even have realized that my relationship with my dad had so much to do with how I show up in the world and how I try to show up, you know, for my for my kids. So definitely reflecting is like my number one pillar for me as far as like, you know, the four things you talked about. Um, because without self-reflection, I, I really wouldn't be able to have lunch with my son's mom. You know what I mean? Like without self-reflection, I wouldn't be able to tell my daughter's mom, hey, like I really appreciated you for doing this. Like, you know what I mean? Because prior to that, it was all like, man, like, I don't like this. I don't like that. I feel alone. And it's like, well, take a step back, reflect and be accountable for what you can be accountable for. So that that, that really helped my co-parenting journey for sure. Got it. Got it. What about, uh, what's mindfulness all about? Man, so same thing, meditation. You know, I I discovered my journaling and and meditation around the same time. And um, the meditation aspect of it gets a little deeper, right? Because, you know, you can, you know, you can talk about being more calm and, you know, and that's just kind of surface level, which is great. Um, But then 
you know, once you are really like deep into the practice, you start becoming way more compassionate. And that's what it helped me with, right? Being compassionate to my children, you know, their, their parent, their moms, like that helped me so much. Like I remember, I'll give you a real life example. And the thing about meditation is you, you do it for like 30 days and you're thinking like, you're going to like, where's the thing at? Where's the, where's the aha moment? And it's like, just, it's like you're lifting weights. Like, you know, you're not going to see the gains right away, but there's going to come a time where you're going to be like, I know for a fact this happened because of my, you know, my, my meditation. And I remember this is very recent. It's probably like, maybe like six months ago, my son got in trouble, typical, 12 year old thing uh snuck a nintendo switch on the school bus or something like that you know what I mean? yeah uh, and uh <laughs> hold on for the school system that's the end of the world yeah <laughs> <laughs> right you know what i mean and um and you know like prior to me being on this journey of self-awareness and meditation and like this same story could have happened and i would have been you know, I, I would have led with frustration, like you know better than that. You know what I mean? Like, da -da -da -da. and and I'm and it's like being more compassionate now makes me parent to understand. Where right? I used to parent to like I know everything, right? So one simple question was when he I heard about this, and now we're having our discussion. And one simple question was. Why did you, why did you feel that was something you needed to do? It sounds real simple, right? Like, duh, who did, but as parents, we, we don't ask why, you know what I mean? Like, cause our parents didn't really ask why, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yep. you did the thing, you knew you weren't supposed to do the thing, here's the repercussion, right? Yeah. And it's like, I just asked him like, well, why, why did you think this was something you, you needed to do? And he's like, well, every time we go on these trips, everybody I sit around, they have, their phones and things like that. And he's, he's kind of feeling isolated. You know, he's maybe he's feeling like he's not cool enough or he's, you know, he straight up told me, he's like, I just got sick of everybody around me being able to have this luxury. And it's like, if I was 11 and my mom didn't want me to take a switch on the bus, right, my dad or my mom didn't want me to take a switch on the bus. But every time I go on the bus, everybody around me has one. What would I do? I would sneak it out the house. Like, yeah, exactly. You know yeah, like, yeah. That's exactly what I would do. And it's like, without my, it's just like, I just feel like that compassion is something I, I never had prior. You know, I was, I was very, I'm very nurturing dad. I give my son kisses, handshakes, like, but it's like, once you do the thing that I think you know better than to do, the, that compassion aspect was really missing. You know what I mean? And I think my meditation practices has helped me be a lot more compassionate see myself as like, it's gonna sound cliche, but one with everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that helps me with my, even with my co-parent thing, it's like something is said, I don't agree with it, but if I have this compassion built up inside of me and I feel like this person is more like me than separate, I'm gonna try my hardest in the moment not to react and to understand, you know? Um, I don't think prior to this, this practice of meditation, I wasn't doing it. I was just reacting, reacting like, yeah. you know, not perfect. Right? We're, we're, we're still human, but imagine showing up this type of way 80% of the time versus 20% of the time. Like it's a, it's a game changing experience for everybody involved, you know? Love it. I love it. Uh, uh, I've been a big fan of Sam Harris's The Waking Up app. That app it's so good. saved my life. Like I'm literally on that app daily. <laughs> wow. That, that app t taught me everything I know about meditation. So yeah, I've been on that app for three years every single day. <laughs> I, I think I just found another another half an hour to an hour. Where we're just talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. So you're still looking for the looker, I bet. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, I am looking for looker all the time. <laughs> Oh man, that's wow. Uh, okay, uh, I we don't want to go here. Oh, but but check it out if you do want to check it out. Uh, the waking up app it, it'll make a, a big difference in your life. And For sure. um, no matter where you are, uh, I, what I really love about Sam's mission here 
was that, uh, and this is worth bringing it up for, for mm-hmm. good fathers, for everybody else is that he, it's a new business model where you can sub to it. If you can, you can ask for a subscription at any, any sort of tier mm-hmm. that you need. So if, if you absolutely need um, a, a free tier, cause that's where you're at, you can just say, Hey, send them an email like, Hey, I, I, I need this for this time. And, and I, I'm not ashamed of saying this, but a couple of years ago, I, mm-hmm. I had zero, I had zero cash, zero liquid cash. I was earning less than 10 K a year. I was in between everything that was going on. And I had to reach out and just say, I, I can't afford this right now. I, I'm really in a tight bind. And they gave me a year mm-hmm. just, and so it's, it's a, it's a, it is a company and an individual we're supporting for the work that he's putting out into the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Let, let's do uh, relationships. Yeah. Um, so relationships is strengthening that relationship with your, uh, you know, the, your, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, you know, whoever you are parenting with in home, you know, separate homes, right? It's just nurturing that relationship. And it's also nurturing the relationship with your child or your children, you know? Mm. Um, and I think the big word for me when it comes to the relationships pa- aspect of it is being intentional, right? Um, you know, that's the biggest thing is being intentional. Um, something that I'm sure we all are, are going to be familiar with, um, one of the prompts in the journals, right? Because nothing about my journal is, every single prompt in it no matter what the pillar is about right there's reflection prompts there's mindfulness prompts relationship prompts and the community building prompts every single prompt in there you can flip to a page and read it and i can tell you exactly what happened in my life that made me write that prompt you know what i mean and um so i'll give you an example i talk about this a lot too so my it was we were at uh like a christmas thing last year right and um family is over and i think my son did something and i was like basically like nope we're taking that electronic away and don't ask for it for the rest of the day right and it was like but it was said way more like stern than that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and uh my daughter's mom was there at the time and she's like you know I agree with you that that was something that needed to be done, but she's like, accountability doesn't need to be sad, right? And I was like, I thought about that for like two weeks. And I'm like, damn, accountability doesn't need to be sad. And that really like stuck with me for a long time because, you know, when it comes to strengthening your relationships, that's, you gotta be intentional. So the next time he does something that he needs to be held accountable for, I can tell him about it, but he doesn't have to feel sad while being told about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, the way that I'm talking to him, the way that I'm expressing myself to him is a lot more understanding, which one of the biggest parenting wins of my life is when we're in the car randomly. We're just talking and driving. We do a lot of driving together. He plays basketball all over the state. and. We're driving and, you know, he's like going through his motions. He's 12. So, you know, he's up and down emotionally and he's like telling me what he appreciates about me. And he's like, you know, like you're like super understanding. I never once looked at my son and said, I want to be understanding. Do you think I'm understanding? Like he threw that word out of his own mouth. Right. And that was because I knew that I needed to be that way. And I was intentionally doing things you know to strengthen our our relationship so it's just like about doing things that that will intentionally strengthen the bond you know um when you're spending time being real intentional about you know putting the phone away and you know like little things that are um it's how you less reacting you know i mean more responding that's how you that's how i've come to build more of an intentional relationship with my children and then uh, with their I, mom, go ahead. Oh, I was I I love what you were saying there because the one of the models that we use in, for feel good fathers is that in a, in any relationship, sometimes mm-hmm. you're making a decision for you, mm-hmm. sometimes you're making the decision for the other person. Mm-hmm. But where you really want to gravitate towards is that both parties are making the decision for the relationship itself. It's the third entity 
right? And if, yeah. if you're Christian, there's a fourth Jesus in the middle, but there's like, there's the three sides in that triangle mm -hmm. with that center. And, you know, when I, and I kept thinking, I was like, what I love about this is that when, what I hear from you, when you're saying be intentional with the relationship and that kind of stuff, I'm saying, what I'm hearing is you're saying, I'm doing what I can to make sure the relationship is strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I, and I, I think especially for the feel good father that wants to lead from the front with their kid and wants to make sure that that, that child sees the best example of, you know, of that they can in their father, that a person that's going to maintain the relationship. I think that's just something that we don't, we don't really teach a lot. And that's a very difficult skill yeah. to learn. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my son to this day, he's 12, right? Uh, five foot seven, like tall kid, mm. you know, to this day, when it's time for him to go to bed, he wants me to go upstairs with him. Talk, essentially, I'm not putting the blanket over him, but he essentially wants me to like guide him into bed. He wants sure. to do our handshakes and, yeah. he, and he wants to say our little routine that we say to each other before yeah. he goes to bed. We've been doing it since he was like four, right? So in my mind, there are times when I'm like, you know, maybe the game is on or something's happening and I'm just like, oh, man, let's go to bed, bro. Like you're, like you're 12 now, right? But because I want to be intentional, I'm like, you know what? Like, no, he appreciates that. Like, that's how you build the bond. Like, especially times when he can kind of sense that I would rather just like, shake your hand right here and then you go to bed but mm. um he senses that but i catch myself and i'm like all right i'll be up and i'll go up there it's like that matters you know what i mean yeah. um so that that's like that's like being intentional you know i i love it too as the example you know we, we talked a lot earlier on about isolation mm -hmm. i i love it because you're really showing him that he's not alone in that moment mm -hmm. you're, you're showing him that he matters you're showing him that he's in the room which I think is, it's a yeah. great, it's a great confidence building piece of just like, oh yeah, like I'm here, I'm acknowledged, I'm known. I'm yeah. Value. And, and the reality is, uh, it may be my last breath. It may be his, like, we don't know that. Right. So that's the yeah. bigger aspect of this is like, you want to make him feel good and you want to build that bond, but you also want to realize that uh, you're not guaranteed this next breath. So I, it would, could you imagine if I wake up and he's not there and I didn't do the handshake, right? Yeah, or, that's just a, that's you, a nightmare. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, or vice versa. You know what I mean? He yeah. didn't get a chance to do the, you know, our super cool handshake with me one last time. Like, you know what I mean? So um, I just think being intentional about their relationships is is, is key. Um, and especially for the co-parenting dad, you know, because yeah. like it's so much, it's a lot of hard work to be intentional with someone who you may feel like you have disagreements with or you know you don't like it's tough but like you said before you like you're doing it for the relationship you know what i mean and and when you do that for the relationship everything else flourishes you know now if i need you to switch a weekend with me because something has come up like you, you don't even have to think twice about it because you want to help right and that's what being intentional is about like you want to help like you know you you need something done that's outside of the norm because of the relationship is what you're looking at. You're not looking at the individual desires. You're so much more able to, to assist, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah that's absolutely. why, that's why I'm very like, Hey, stuff and such. Thank you for doing this or Hey, stuff and such. Like you're doing a good job. Like I can tell that what you're doing, is reflecting in how he or she is acting like, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's good. I, I love it. I I'm really excited. I, I think that the, I'm excited to learn more from you yeah. as we, as we hang, I can see us hanging out more. I can yeah, see us having yeah. more conversations. Uh, you've got the, the, the three, six, five dad.com journal. Now, when you're looking that up, it's not the numbers three, six, five, it's, the spelling of the word three, six, five. So T H R E E, et cetera, mm -hmm. dad.com. Uh, that's going to be up, uh, any, any minute now it'll be yeah. awake. It'll be yeah. awake and alive on the yeah. net, uh, support our, our good buddy Odini. Uh, if other, if, if there's another capacity that, that folks want to get in touch with you, maybe for it's the co-parenting coach coaching for dads, how can they reach out to you? 
I would say the easiest way to reach out to me right now, other than the website, is by going to my Instagram. Um, so that's uh, underscore O D E A N I. Um, and uh, just reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, follow me there. Reach out to me and uh, let's work. You know, um, I'm, I'm excited for this new journey in my life. You know what I mean? I'm excited to help. And uh, I just want to say, if you don't mind, I'm going to, this is the journal right here. And um, I'm going to just t tell you one thing about this journal is I assure you these prompts are so deep that, you know, it's nothing cookie cutter. You know what I mean? I, I talk about so much in here. There's guided meditation practices in here. Uh, there's gratitude practices. There's self-reflection about your childhood. Like this journal will for sure help you on you know your way to to being this a more conscious dad in general so love it i can't wait to can't wait to get, get it my hands on it and start doing it for a year please <laughs> awesome oh, oh Jeannie mcbean everybody thank you thank you so much thank you so much